Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's Eva from Bohemian Crafting. Uh, I was thinking for two weeks what I'm gonna share with you and I have to be honest with you, lately in my mind it's all about Christmas. Look at that, I do have everywhere just Christmas stuff. <laughs> So, I was thinking maybe I will come up with something what can be used for junk journals. As a junk journal maker, I love to create journals, yet not around Christmas time. I know Christmas is far long way, but uh, maybe I have something what can be used for both. So today I'm gonna scrap uh, one of these old envelopes and I will try to create a gift box from this and I'm gonna be sewing today because I love sewing more and more I'm learning sewing from many channels I'm watching on YouTube so there will be sewing we're gonna create something from this I need a long piece of cardstock so I'm gonna be cutting this envelope here and in some nice width here I'm gonna tell you First, uh, I'm gonna tell you measurement. Uh, I think these are, yeah, inches. So in inches, this is 14 inches, or in centimeters, it is 35 and a half centimeters. Uh, this folded is in inches, 10 inches. And in centimeters, it will be 25, 25, 25 centimeters. I'm going to cut my envelope. First, I'm going to cut off this uh, folded edge. So I'm going to start here from this point. This I'm going to cut as a first. That will be my leftover and I'm not going to count that. From that point, I'm going to cut six inches first, which means here. All that strip then from this point I'm gonna cut uh, three and a half and I think I was wrong with my measurement where is half on this one yeah I can't see that I think somewhere here is it half probably okay three and a half which means here and from this point I'm gonna cut one and one quarter yeah, one and one quarter, so somewhere here. So these strips, and I will have really nice long strips. If you will imagine this open later, I will have nice long strips. So I have managed to cut these pieces from my envelope. Uh, I'm gonna tell you one more time. Six inches, three and a half, and these are one and one quarter, one and one quarter, all these strips. These I'm gonna move aside for now, and this one I'm gonna take. Uh, I'm gonna cut from this long strip two small ones. So here I'm gonna cut straight with that edge because I know that is straight. I'm gonna help myself with the ruler here. And now I'm gonna measure seven inches here, seven and seven. And I'm gonna cut these two at once, lay it flat, put there my ruler and cut two pieces seven inches long you have my two cards seven inches long and those three and a half in the width now I'm gonna take scoring board and both of these cards I'm gonna score on three sides these two long and one of these short half inch half inch half inch and half inch I'm gonna do same on both of these cards 
I do have my scoring done. I'm gonna take my cutting mat and I'm gonna take uh, this tape, any kind of tape which has curve. And I will try to find some scoring tool. Or so I found this scoring tool. It does have a bubble or <laughs> yeah, bubble on the end. You can use a knitting needle. You can use maybe tweezers or a, like empty pen. I'm gonna place my uh, the the curved shape on the edges of kind of like. If you will imagine this way. Here I can see my scoring lines. So this and this have to be uh, pointed together with that curve. And I'm going to score with my scoring tool that curve. like this I can see there and I'm gonna do this on both of these cards place it here match it here and score that curved line then I will grab my scissors and kind of like follow in that half inch distance that curve and same here. Like this. I'm going to do the same on that second card. I do have prepared my both cards with that uh, embossed curve and with cutted corners. Uh, it's all for now. Uh, not actually all. I'm going <laughs> to flip it over. And I'm going to take cheesecloth and glue the cheesecloth from this side. I'm going to be using this cheesecloth. It's 90 grade. It's nice and thick. And I'm going to fussy cut out around. And remember, you don't have to go to buy straight away this cheesecloth. Maybe you do have some old clothes which you don't want to use anymore. I'm going to be actually using t-shirt for the main cover so go to have a look maybe you do have some old clothes and you have there something what doesn't have thick material just use it don't go buy straight away something which are because i am using it okay i just wanted to give you options otherwise i would be <laughs> using here, here that t-shirt as well but i wanted to give you some options if you do have cheesecloth you can use cheesecloth if you do have old material, old clothes, use that. Scrap anything you can for the craft. Then fussy cut out the fabric around your envelope like this. I do have fussy cut out the fabric around. And uh, I'm going to take my sewing machine and I'm going to be s uh, making sewing or stitching uh, kind of like inside around my uh, embossing or that scoring, scoring line, not embossing. I do have my stitching done and now I can take scissors and with my scissors I'm going to cut uh, this curved uh, curved corners just to that uh, score line just few cuts around that curve and that's it and again here just to that score line not to that stitching just to that score line like this so I can fold it this way and it doesn't make uh, you know it's not hard to fold it this way I'm gonna do same on that second piece I do have my side pieces done and now I'm gonna move to this long piece that large one six inches in the width that first I cut it and on this printed side I'm gonna keep this 
because it's nice and clean. On this printed side, I'm going to be using this old t-shirt just because it's nice and big. And I believe I can find here a big piece of fabric which will cover all. Yes, definitely. Uh, if you don't have old clothes, maybe you do have old pillowcases, old uh, window blinders. Any kind of fabric will be good, really, trust me. I'm using old fabric, old handbags, old t-shirts, old pillowcases for such a long time and they always make perfect craft material. So go to have a look what you've got at home and use what you have. I'm going to cut the piece which I need ish and glue it on this printed side. And I totally forgot before I will glue it, I want to do same corners I did here, curved corners. So I'm going to be using for all four of them. I think this one I'm going to cut a little bit down because it's ripped off. So I'm going <coughs> to move for a minute my fabric. I'm going to cut this one slightly. Ever so slightly. Just make nice straight edge. Now with my tape, or you can take, I don't know, uh, lid from glue, uh, anything what has, you know, curve. Or you can take paper punch if you do have large curved paper punch, take that. I'm gonna take my tape and like before, from the edge to the edge and there draw the curve and then I will fussy cut out again from the edge to the edge draw Now I'm going to take my scissors, cut out these corners, and then I will glue the fabric on, on it. I do have all that piece covered with that uh, t-shirt fabric. Sorry for my finger, I do have new scissors, and they are unexpectedly sharp. <laughs> so I just slide a little bit. I do have that uh, piece uh, covered with that uh, fabric and now I'm gonna sew all around about half centimeter from the edge stitching just decorative stitching and also catch the fabric uh, to that paper I do have the piece co covered with the fabric and sewn around um, I'm gonna take my three pieces and I'm gonna decorate them I do have here these Beautiful guys, they are from Creative Expression. These, and it's called Celtic Collection Keira. And there, there are two dies, one with that swirl and one kind of like a web edge around. I'm gonna glue two of them to the sides. This will be my inside where there is the fabric. So to the sides here and here and one uh, oops. I'm gonna choose which side of this will be the flap I think this side will be flap so here I'm gonna glue it in the middle like this I think it's dry enough uh, I'm gonna take my uh, kind of like base piece I'm gonna flip it the way which will be pocket this will be flap with that decoration so this will be pocket I'm gonna grab uh, those two small pieces and I forgot to cut one corner so this will be on this side this one will be on this side so I'm gonna grab one place it to that corner where it will be sewn match the sides take a pencil draw this shape here that corner then cut it off I 
I'm gonna take that second piece, place it to opposite corner and do exactly the same. So now I can take pegs or I can just put there a little bit of glue here and glue it down. I do have them here. Don't wanna move it too much. I'm gonna take my sewing machine and I'm gonna start to sew here, right next to that score line. I'm gonna start to sew uh, through to both packages. And as I said, this is inside of my back. This plain side will be outside. And again, with the fabric here, it will be inside of my back. And I'm gonna do just straight stitching here. So I do have sewn my uh, front pieces. On that rest, uh, I'm gonna take sew uh, sewing double-sided tape. And I'm gonna put double-sided tape on these edges. On each of these cuts, I'm gonna place piece of double-sided tape. I also placed a piece of double-sided tape here. And you can actually use double-sided tape on all, all around and just glue it. You don't have to use the sewing machine. That was just, I wanted it, you know, I'm in sewing right now. So I do have there my double-sided tape. Then take your double-sided tape off. And we're gonna start to place it together. So I'm gonna hold my paper and I'm gonna fold this the way that I will match the edges and press. And now this I'm gonna press around. So I'm just gonna make an order and press it. Just they lay them flat. And I'm going to continue here. I'm going to fold these inside. They will go like last one. Fold this. Go with this paper. And match the sides. Like this, and now last we'll go these, lay them flat, like this. Can take my bone folder and press. If there will be any over edges, especially in these curves, I'm gonna take my scissors and cut it off. I do have glued both sides. I also uh, took my scissors and anything what was peeking out, I tried to cut this side. It's nice and straight. And here I do have still a little bit of leftover so I can take my uh, sanding, you know, sanding tool and sand it a little bit. To make it nice and straight. I'm gonna take my sewing machine and with my sewing machine I'm gonna try to get you know as far as I can and just do straight stitching here with uh, kind of like double or triple stitching here on the edges just to make sure here it will hold really nicely. So I do have that stitching here and here and so far I do have nice <laughs> nice back. So now uh, I'm gonna take those two strips. <clears throat> oh no! First, uh, I'm gonna take acrylic paints. Actually, I didn't wanna paint this one before. I will sew it because I didn't wanna mess up with my sewing machine. You know, to sew something what is painted with acrylics. Uh, I'm gonna take acrylic paints and paint this all over. And this can happen when you are quite hurry to mix your own color and you don't pay attention. So <laughs> I do have lots of color which I actually didn't finish to the tone I want. 
on my table so I'm gonna use it and then I will somehow finish it with the tone I wish I need to be careful here so this should be a little bit more darker and I don't want to have that paint inside so I need to be really careful around the edges here and on that opposite side but rest I can paint paint like very fast I guess especially now when I do have all paint around my table so I'm gonna spend some time with the painting with this kind of like I'm gonna call that basic color and then I will come back once I will uh, start to add colors which I want So I do have my two coats of that painting done uh, and I think it's dry. I do have here a uh, water brush with water and I made uh, from black acrylic paint from this one. I made kind of like watery, uh, watery mix so I'm gonna paint it inside. And a little bit around. And just with a towel. a bit more darker. it's uh, dry the colors so I uh, stuck it with empty boxes uh, in the you know in the size I want and I wrapped around this one it's not like decoration it's just holding my box closed I already prepared one of these strips one and one quarter of inch in the width and I glued on the box on one side that same fabric I glued inside that t-shirt fabric because I really like that fabric <laughs> it's good quality and then I cut two pieces from that other strip one and one quarter so I cut it two strips 
I forgot how long. I think one and three quarters. Yes, one and three quarters. Two strips from this strip. And I glued them on the same fabric, just, you know, with this facing out. And I'm going to do it one more time with both strips. That I'm going to glue this one here. Oh, sorry. This one from this side. So I will have covered both sides with this fabric. And this one I'm going to glue here. So I will have from both sides this white fabric. I do have both pieces wrapped in that fabric. First, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to put this kind of in the middle of that white piece and I'm going to make a mark. About half centimeter, cent centimeter from the edge here. And about same here and same from that opposite side. Now I'm gonna cut slot here. And I'm gonna give it a try if I can go through with this. Yes. And the other one. Yes. So now I'm gonna take my sewing machine and, oh, not yet. Now I need to measure how big piece I need here. So I'm gonna just wrap it around and measure up. I actually need this one so I'm not gonna cut it down. I'm gonna use this piece yeah so I'm gonna use this piece as it is. On my sewing machine, I'm going to sew around uh, both of these pieces, just straight stitching. I do have my two pieces sewn around. I made this one slightly shorter because it was just too long. So I made it the way that they will meet here. And I can use the eyelets and make it like wrapping with the closure. So first, what I'm going to do... Before I will put them together, I'm going to pull out gold uh, color. I've got here, this is, uh, I believe, chalk paint. Shabby chic chalk based furniture paint. In golden color, it it's just beautiful color, antique gold. And it works so well on papers, on fabrics, not just on furniture. So I'm going to apply this gold on the edges, on all three pieces actually. Do have the eyelets uh, fitted? I'm gonna try to slide 
because I forgot to slide it in before <laughs> I added those eyelets, but hopefully it will be okay. One side. other side yeah here we have golden dot but I think that's okay I do have the belt and I do have here my snowy paste uh, it's mix of white acrylic uh, glue PVA glue sand aquarium white aquarium sand and a little bit of glitter but the glitter got lost so i'm guessing the sand would do what i needed to do so that's my homemade snowy paste and i'm gonna add this snow on that buckle bucket buckle and i'm gonna let this dry it will dry till tomorrow maybe even longer it takes a time but in the end it always looks amazing So a little bit of snowy effect. And now it just needs to dry. And this is how my box looks like. The closure here. It can be filled even more. I just don't have there too much stuff. You can just slide it down, open your box, plant everything what you've got inside. It can be perfect box for journal, perfect box for Christmas gifts. And I think no one will guess that it was made from old clothes and old envelope. It looks like leather, I have to say. Those three coats of acrylic paint does the magic. And all that shading, uh, it did work really well. So I'm really happy with how it turns out. So that's my sharing for today. I hope you did enjoy it. Uh, thank you so much for visiting me today. Thank you so much for spending your time with me. Have a wonderful day. Take care of yourself. And I will come back soon. Bye.